This is an amendment for the FY Revised Budget Request Act of 2010, which would have, which, yes, I do, Mr. Chairman, I thought I put it up. Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Which would restore approximately $20 million in funding for safety net and community support programs, specifically restoring TANF, the year-round youth employment program, the local rent supplement program, the interim disability assistance program, the grandparents caregiver subsidy program, the community collaboratives, the access to justice program, and other community, essential community safety net programs. These programs represent support for those who have been mostly affected by the tough recession we've had here in our city and disproportionately affects the most, the least, the last, and the lost here in our city. The restoration of this funding would be contingent on the passage of an amendment for FY11 Budget Support Act, which Council Members Graham, Thomas, and I plan to introduce later today, which basically is a tax increase on our wealthiest citizens here in the District of Columbia. It would create two new high income tax brackets, a $200,000 a year at 8.9%, which is an increase of 0.4%, another for a million dollars a year, a 9.2, which is an increase of 0.7%. This increase would also affect only the top 4% of wage earners here in our city, and the residents are right in line with President Obama's tax categories. Under this proposal, our top tax rate would still be lower than several other states, including folks around in our surrounding jurisdictions. Over the past three years, in Prince George's County and Montgomery County, have also raised their income tax. It would also remain lower than the D.C. top tax rate in 2002. One of the things I want folks to understand, Mr. Chairman, so folks can understand how this would impact folks' checks, let me just give you an idea. For someone making $300,000 a year, the tax increase would lead to an increased tax withholding of $15.38 from an average biweekly paycheck. Additionally, a portion of the increase would offset the fact that residents would be able to deduct those increases from their federal taxes, so roughly 30% being returned from the lower federal tax liability. So, Mr. Chairman, I clearly feel, along with my colleagues, hopefully we can restore some of these cuts and make sure that the folks who have been affected by the recession the most are not impacted and, frankly, that we spread the pain throughout the city. So, Mr. Chairman, I know it's difficult for us to accept that we will be balancing this budget on the backs of poor people in the District of Columbia. I think a lot of folks would have a problem with that. I certainly do as well. So, Mr. Chairman, I move this amendment. Gotcha. Mr. Chairman. Discussion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like, if I can. Mr. Graham. Yes, thank you, Mr. Graham. Mr. Chairman, I am very pleased to be a co-introducer of this amendment. It proceeds on a fundamental notion that those who have the most should be helping those who have the least in our community. And the fact of the matter is that the budget we got from the mayor of the District of Columbia had 40 percent of its cuts aimed at low-income people, aimed at low-income programs, aimed at those who could afford it the least. Now, there isn't a member of this council who would have that as a preference, but we have a solution. And the solution is to turn to those who are still doing very well. I mean, think of this. A taxable income of a million dollars, a million dollars. In other words, here's somebody whose lawyers and accountants have worked all year long to make sure that every single dollar was kept out of taxation. They still end up with a million dollars. Whatever they pay to the District of Columbia, they can deduct from their federal income tax. Did you hear that bit? They can deduct it from their federal income tax. And so here you have people who are most able to assist those in this economy who are at greatest need. I don't think there's any question but the amount of impact that we would have on those high-income earners is minimal compared to the amount of impact we're going to have on poor people if this budget passes the way it's been proposed. And you look at people, you talk about sleeping in a van. You talk about no emergency rental assistance. You talk about no emergency housing assistance. 
you talk about other cuts that are going to reduce the ability of those least able to pay. I think this council is not made up of Tea Party members. This council is made up. This council. This council is made up of mostly. Mr. Graham, excuse me. Excuse me. I'm going, I'm going to ask once again that people observe the rules of decorum in this chamber. And that is no demonstrations. And if, you pers if people persist, we just clear out the whole chamber and people can watch this on television. Okay? Mr. Graham? I was just going to say, we're Democrats here. And we're Democrats here. And we believe, we believe in a progressive income tax. Well, let me, I know my other colleagues are going to be talking about this, but I just want to say in conclusion that the tax rate that has previously been in place in the District of Columbia has been as high as 10% in 1986, as high as 9.3% in 2000, in the year 2000, as high as 9% in the year 2003. So what we're doing here is we're really restoring the tax to prior levels. This is not a new, a new increase in terms of the history of tax rates in the District of Columbia. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.